Even all remarks here, back in another video, back again with another Oculus Quest and Oculus Go video, because I've just been made aware of a very interesting update. Now, at the moment, I'm playing the PC VR version of Beat Saber. So not the Beat Saber in Oculus Quest. This is the PC version streamed to my headset. So what you're seeing is exactly what I'm seeing. Uh, it works pretty well. My PC and my uh, headset are on the same Wi-Fi network, 5G. Um, but this isn't done via ALVR or V-Ridge, which are the two known platforms at the moment. This is done via Virtual Desktop. So if you didn't know, Virtual Desktop is a platform on the Oculus Go and the Oculus Quest that allows you to control your PC remotely. So you can control it within the same headset on the same Wi-Fi network, but you can also control it sort of remotely, uh, literally if you're in a coffee shop or someone else's house and your PC's on, you can still sort of dial into it and control it. And they've now released an update that allows you to play PC VR games like AR VR allows you to do, but within virtual desktop. So you might be saying, well, what difference does that make? Does that make any proper difference to this? Well, let me show you. So I guess the, the good thing here is if we hold the Oculus button down on the left hand controller, it brings up the menu for Steam VR. And it was really easy to set up. So we can kind of turn this off, exit VR, and that should kind of kick us back to home. Here we go. So now I'm on my desktop. So this is my virtual desktop within virtual desktop app. And you can grab your kind of window with your kind of grip buttons, move it where you want, make it bigger, make it smaller, do all that sort of good stuff. Uh, if you press the sort of menu button on the left hand controller once, you can see I'm connected to my PC at the moment, five gigahertz website, getting 866 megabits per second. And at the moment it's running at 16 megabits per second video streaming. I think that goes up to about 40 or 30. Um, and I've locked it at the moment to 60 frames per second. So there are some settings. You can go into different environments so we can jump into a computer room and have our own sort of little uh, computer room. It's full sixed off so you can kind of do all your moving around and wandering around and whatever you want to do. So if you want to, you, we, I like these, uh, well, yes, you can choose sort of anything. Like you can go to an auditorium here. That's pretty cool. So I'm controlling my PC from here. There's no kind of social aspect to this, but I guess the great thing is, is you could be dialed into Discord, sharing your Discord screen with other people if you really wanted to. But let's change back to a, a void. Um, so yeah, look, so I can move my screen around, do all sorts of cool stuff. I can control my PC um, exactly as if it was a real PC. So, you know, click on the start button. I can grab things and move them around. I can right click on them by cl clicking the, what is that, the B button. <laughs> um, and I can do all that sort of good stuff. So you install this virtual desktop sort of little mini application which is in my desktop over here. Where is it? There. Double click. So this is the uh, little application that just runs in the background of your PC uh, and it just allows you to connect wirelessly to your headset. So the great thing is, as I've said, is they've now included a Steam VR uh, add-on for it. So you can play normal Steam games anyway. So any of your Steam library that you've got, all these kind of Steam games, even the 2D ones, you can actually, there is actually now an option as well where you can enable touch controllers to be used like a gamepad. So the controllers kind of look like an Xbox controller, don't they? But kind of like split in half. Um, and you can now enable that, and then it treats your two controllers as if it's an Xbox pad. Now it's not perfect, but it's actually pretty good for quite a lot of games, especially a lot of these kind of 2D games on PC, because they don't typically kind of function totally with an Xbox controller. They just want a controller. Uh, so you can map buttons around and all that sort of good stuff anyway. Um, you can actually connect an Xbox controller to the headset if you really wanted to anyway. That's an, that's an option. But if you keep it with VR controls, you can do your Steam VR games. So we can go to our VR games here and we can choose anything we want. So I've only got a few installed on here. Here we're playing a little bit of Serious Sam. So with Series 7, for example, I had to enable the Xbox controller for it to be able to work properly. But you can still kind of bring up guns and shoot. You can still turn around. Oh, you can still sort of uh, hunt people down and it looks pretty good. I wouldn't say it looks as good as a as my Rift, for example, plugged straight into the headset. Oh, I felt like I had a duck there. Um, but the streaming quality is quite good. And as I say, it does work over um, a 4G connection. So I actually disconnected my, my headsets from my home Wi-Fi. Uh, I connected them to my phone Wi-Fi 
and it still looked pretty much like this. What I would say is it did work better on the Quest than it did the Go, um, so sort of bear that in mind. Uh, but yeah, you can play full PC VR games to your heart's content, and at any point you can just hold down the, the option button, come back to here, come back to your library, choose a gift, different game that you want to play, uh, Skyrim, you can play that, Beat Saber, you can play whatever you want. Even the simulator games work, but they, they like a gamepad. And that's where the Oculus Go comes in, because it works with that as well. And I think the best thing with the Oculus Go is if you pair a controller with it, you can play flight sims and racing sims and tank sims and all sorts, and just, yeah, use looking around and, you know, fly a plane using your full VR controls. It does technically track your one controller as well. So you can do some kind of button switching. Oh, oh, oh! Whoops, Daisy. Too uh, focused on my hand. But it works quite well, and I've played a fair few games this way, um, and had a lot of fun using the, the Oculus Go as the, you know a head-mounted sort of VR unit. You can even play Beat Saber with one controller. So look, one saber, the other one's on the floor down there. Um, and you can just turn on no fail, no obstacles. And although one-handed Beat Saber is a possibility on here, I actually kind of just prefer playing sort of expert. It's a bit of a mini game. Just avoid the uh, red ones, only hit the blue ones. And we're not playing for score, we're just playing for fun. But uh, yeah, so this works quite well on the go. I'm on the same Wi-Fi network here as my Go and my headset, but I have used it with 4G and it worked quite well. The quality wasn't as good, but you know, what do you expect? There are some settings inside of uh, inside of uh, virtual desktop to allow you to kind of like decrease the quality and the frame rate to make it as, as stable as possible. But this works really well and I'm actually really kind of impressed with it. So let me know in the comments down below, is this something you'd use now that it's, and you know, the most official way, I would say, the easiest way of doing ALVR type stuff, playing PC VR games on your uh, VR devices, whether it's the Go or the Quest, because even with um, ALVR and VRIS, you have to kind of insert a code and download the app separately, whereas this is built into virtual desktop. And at any point, you can just jump over to virtual desktop and start controlling your PC like normal. So you could be passing across your microphone. You could have somebody in Discord with you while you're playing. You could be listening to Spotify in the background. You could be doing anything your PC can do in your VR headset. And that's exciting. I think that's awesome. So as I say, let me know in the comments down below, what do you think about this? I think this is now the number one way of doing it. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, that's fine. I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it. But do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it. I'll try and do better for next time. Become one of the Remarkables, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified when I next upload a video. And that's me done. I'm out, have a virtual high five. Ah, where's my camera? There it is.